We're now entering that stage where we start to see rumors and leaks surface surrounding Nvidia's upcoming graphics cards. I'm talking about the RTX 50 series which will be powered by the Blackwell architecture. Recent info surrounding the memory configurations for various SKUs makes me optimistic that this series will be solving some qualms people have with the mid-range and mainstream cards we've had in the past. However, with the RTX 50 series, I think I know how Nvidia is going to be FOMOing people hard into the flagship or the high end. Let's discuss that in this this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. This past week, we've seen quite a bit of information coming out online surrounding Nvidia's upcoming RTX 50 series. I'm actually a bit late on this myself because I've been busy with many other things going on in my life, which is why I also haven't been uploading as much. The other reason is because, well, if I'm to be honest, the PC gaming hardware space has become a bit boring, especially when it comes to GPUs. There just isn't any real competition in the space and also given that there has been many talks about AMD cancelling high-end RDNA 4, then the next gen is just going to be all NVIDIA. On top of that, I personally feel like outside of super heavy graphics like path tracing, we're at the stage now where graphics and FPS figures aren't all that important. When we were recently going over some budget and mid-range builds, and while I was looking at performance benchmarks, I came to this realization that unless you're playing the latest AAA games with all the eye candy turned on, then most of the hardware we have, even if it's like a $400 GPU, will still go far for a lot of folks especially when more than half of the PC gamer user base is on 1080p. Along with that, many new games I feel like were coming to this limit with graphics and sooner or later many of these companies, game devs, hardware manufacturers like Nvidia or AMD will need to innovate outside of graphics to sell their products which is something I can definitely foresee NVIDIA doing. I mean, earlier this year, they demonstrated two AI NPCs having a totally unscripted conversation and allowing the player to interact with them. Now, this is probably niche. I'm not sure how many people will actually want to play their games like this, but this is just one example of what I mean. There are many other possibilities, even for hardcore multiplayer gamers. But what's cool is that it's the tech that their GPUs are capable of handling, and it's not directly related to graphics. With the RTX 50 series, that is actually what I am mostly looking forward to. What kind of new never before seen feature are we going to see from Nvidia that can change the way we play our games? And I think a lot of people are starting to get on board with this, where they're not concerning themselves with how much average FPS X card has over Y card from the previous generation. For example, if the RTX 5090 came out and was like, 70% faster than the RTX 4090 in raster, that's cool I guess, but to me, honestly, I just wouldn't be hyped about it because based on the games I'm playing right now, they work just fine on a 3080, let alone an RTX 4090. So this is why I think it's crucial for them to come out with some feature that isn't just related to graphics or some kind of crazy performance booster, when let's be real here, 60 FPS is fine for the vast majority of single player titles and most multiplayer games are run on low medium settings to prioritize performance anyways. Let's circle back to the topic on hand, which is the Nvidia Blackwell leaks. Video cards have summarized the info on their website, so I'll have links to those articles in the video description. You'll see we have the infamous copite 7 kimi on Twitter, who has been at the forefront of all these Nvidia leaks these past few years, quote unquote leaks. But remember, grain of salt folks, never set your expectations too high unless you want to get disappointed. Now, in regards to the information they're sharing, a lot of it pertains to the memory configurations for the various SKUs that we can expect from Nvidia's Blackwell lineup. Therefore, this is a follow-up from an older tweet which we had also discussed on the channel where there was a possibility Nvidia would design GB202 using a 512-bit bus. But Copite is flip-flopping here as on March 8th, they mentioned that wouldn't be the case and Blackwell would have similar memory configurations as Ada, but then on March 11th, they go back to stating that 512-bit bus is back on the table. What I'll say about this is that I'm not going to be completely dismissive of the possibility of a 512-bit bus. It's just that the likelihood of this happening are very low, and I don't see what incentive Nvidia would have in order to do this, but we'll circle back to this in a moment. Furthermore, they did mention how the new series will be adopting GDDR7 that's rated to run at 28 gigabits per second, which is a bit lower than what I was expecting as I thought that they would be going for modules rated to run at 32 gigabits per second. Nonetheless, this is good news because with new G7 modules, they can utilize 3 gigabyte chips, which means that even on lower tier cards like an RTX 57, 
570, which will more than likely use a 192-bit bus. It can have 18 gigabytes, and memory bandwidth will also go up even if the bus width itself is slim since the modules are clocked higher. This will give Nvidia a lot more freedom to play around with different types of memory configurations, so they could still give you an 8 gigabyte RTX 5060 while giving the RTX 5060 Ti 12 gigabytes, but at this stage, or rather we're going to be looking at 2025, I'd be expecting 12 gigabytes to be the minimum for an X60 class GPU. Moving along, Copite also talks about how the upcoming GB203 GPU, which is what the RTX 5080 will be using, will come with a 256-bit bus, which would make sense if they're going to be keeping the same memory configs for the lower-end SKUs. Then we've got GB205, and as we discussed last year where Nvidia had decided there won't be GB204. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the 5070 will be an even smaller GPU. For all we know, Blackwell across the board could just have larger dies, similar to what happened with Turing. But I also wouldn't be surprised if the X70 GPU is based on a smaller die than what we've traditionally been accustomed to seeing for this tier. Every corporation is indulging in shrinkflation these days, and we already saw that with the RTX 40 series, so I wouldn't put it past them. The other thing that I can see being very likely is Nvidia is going to be segmenting their GPUs really hard and even further apart, especially at the high end where the RTX 5090 and 5080 will be in a totally different tier compared to the other options we get from GB205 and downwards, and circling back to the 5090. It'll probably have an even larger gap compared to what we saw from the 4090 and 4080. I think they learned their lesson from the RTX 30 series, where performance-wise the 3080 and 3090 were just too close. So with the 40 series, if you were looking at the 4080, it just made sense to go for the 4090. Instead, they upsold everyone to the flagship. Now, I'm not sure what pricing is going to look like, but what I do know is to expect higher prices for everything across the board, given that we're dealing with a node shrink here and more expensive G7 memory. Also, given what we're seeing so so far, Nvidia's play here might be to make people FOMO badly into getting the 5090. They'll see how much faster it'll be compared to the RTX 5080, they might even see it has double the memory bus. People need to recognize that Nvidia's main objective here is to sell consumers their larger, largest die because it's what they make the most amount of margin on. They really don't care about selling these small 8106 or 8107 dies to consumers where the margins are thinner. This will also depend on what I was talking about earlier in the video where we need to see what kind of new feature or gimmick they roll out alongside the RTX 50 series. With the RTX 40 series, we got frame gen, and over time, a lot of people got on board with it, and how they marketed the 4090 was kind of genius. It was that they showed off games like Cyberpunk, but with path tracing, so it looked like you had never seen it before. Or, you know, they had Portal RTX, a fan favorite game from the past, at 4K, but with frame gen turned on. So that's the only way you could play these games at playable frame rates. And they said that, hey, if you want this, then pay up. I assume it'll be a similar strategy with the 50 series. It's basically because they're not going to be selling you GPU hardware on FPS figures alone. That stopped a long time ago. But you just need to know that Nvidia will have something up their sleeve, and whatever it is, the 5090 will be crapping all over the 4090, hence you'll see a lot of people FOMO for it. When it comes to plain old raster performance, I'm not really expecting a huge performance increase this time around. Probably more like 30 to 40%. I'm just going to be erring on the side of caution. Now, I did see a number of sites quote this Twitter user by the name of AGF, and I'm not sure how good their track record is. Again, grain of salt, folks. But they stated that apparently GB203, so that's the RTX 5080, won't be much faster than an RTX 4090 in plain raster. But where it'll have an advantage in is uh, ray tracing or path tracing performance. This person also mentioned in another tweet that the reason why Nvidia has designed the 5090 with a 512 bit bus is because they were expecting it to go up against a monster 3 nanometer RDNA 4 GPU. Quote unquote, that is. This right here sounds like BS to me because Nvidia doesn't even consider Radeon as competition anymore. So they're not designing future GPUs with Radeon in mind. I'm not sure where they got that from. But what I do believe in is the part where they mention GB203 will be slightly faster than the RTX 4090. The reason why is because to me, this transition feels very similar to when we were going from the Pascal 10 series to the RTX 20 series. So prior to Turing, we have the GTX 1080 Ti which sat uncontested, and below that you have AMD's RX Vega 64 and the GTX 1080 matching each other. Then once Turing came out, the 2080 matched the 1080 Ti, and the 2080 Ti sat by itself for a long time because AMD had decided to only make mainstream GPUs, the 5700 XT, 
and the RX 5700. They did have Radeon 7, but that was such a niche card, so I don't really count it. If you look at what's happening currently, we've got the 7900 XTX and the 4080 or 4080 Super going head to head with the 4090 sitting by itself. There is no alternative. So I believe that next gen, the 5080 could just be a 4090 with better ray tracing and path tracing performance, along with whatever gimmick, and it'll probably sell for the same price as the 4090 at $1,600, give or take. Then we'll probably have the 5090, which will be the only GPU that brings a major performance jump and will be selling for around $2,200. But it doesn't matter because there will be no other alternative. So this could just be a repeat of Turing. Cause like I said, Apparently AMD is not coming out with high-end RDNA 4, so Nvidia is just going to sit uncontested this entire generation. In other words, expect some expensive graphics cards, and because these new graphics cards will be pricier than the previous gen, prices of old cards probably are not going to be dropping, if at all. So we'll leave it at that for now, we're in the early stages of this stuff, but given that we're already seeing so much info and chatter coming out, means we might get a release later on this year instead of a delay to 2025. Alrighty guys, so we'll touch base on the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.